morning, good morning, and happy Friday to you. This is Brenda Perryman, and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33 WHPR. Comcast 20 in Detroit, and we are so happy to see you on this sunny Friday. Now, I have a very interesting show for you today, a great show for you today, and I've hoped you've had a wonderful week. And this is the balance of the week, and I hope you're ready for the weekend. And get, If you have to get some rest this weekend, get that. If you want to party, do that. Sky is the limit. Also, my book has finally come out, my book of poetry that... I was on with Richard Harrison a few weeks talking about it, and it's Mood Swings and Magic Carpet Rides, Redux Plus Two, which means this is a compilation of my three books, and it has some other new poetry in it, too. You can buy it on Amazon.com, and I could always autograph a copy for you, but I'm very, very proud of it, very, very proud of it. Uh, the publisher did a wonderful, wonderful job. So. I'm going to be like other people. I'm going to hawk my book, but hope you get a chance to look at it. I know you like the poetry. I know. Now, it's time for me to introduce my first guest to you, and I've known this guest since he was a young person, and now he's a little older, and he is Councilman Rodney Patrick from the city of Detroit, a city of Highland Park, golly. Highland Park. Good morning, Rodney. How are you? Good morning, Ms. Herbert. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, you have just grown into such a wonderful, wonderful young man. But we're going to tell you a little about Rodney, then we're going to get into some things about the city of Highland Park and, and vicinity, what's happening in the region. And uh, Rodney, you you were born here. Uh, well, you've been here for how long? All my life. It's 1967, December 8th, 1967. Wow. Yeah. That was a little after the riot, a uh -oh. few months after the riot. My mother was actually pregnant when the riot was taking place. She would sit on the porch, and when the National Guard would come down the street, she would go in and keep me safe. Oh, <laughs> that that was wonderful, wonderful. And you graduated from Highland Park Community High School. Um, I went to Highland Park Community um, High School a couple of years, but I, I did graduate from Benedictine High School. Uh, from Benedictine. Yeah. It's been. Yeah. Did you know Mr. Mack? I did know Mr. Mack and Sister Jackie. Well, Mr. Mack was my government teacher oh, okay. when I went to high school. Okay. Oh, okay. with that crew cut. Yes. Yes. He gave me a C in writing. Uh, he probably gave me a C as well. Well, in, I knew all the material, but he <laughs> said, uh, but she, he told my mother, well, she can't write well. I said, what? <laughs> I knew I could write and got to college, learned to write better. Exactly. And I've become a five genre writer. He, need, he the, needs your book. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I got a few things to say. But anyway, I'm so happy to have you here. You're a hard man to pin down. Uh, and how long have you been on the city council? This is my second term. I had a first partial term, and now this is my, um, in the middle of my Now, how did you have term. a partial term? We had a couple of council members that um, retired or passed away, and we had to have a special election, and I was able to finish out their term, and then What year was term, this again? 2010, I believe. Yeah, oh. 2010. And, um... Councilman Wyndham at the time, and I ran for, oh. uh, for the uh, two remaining vacant seats out of four candidates. We won, and then I was to finish out the partial term, and so now we're in a, uh, in a full term. Okay, when is this term up? Um, two years. Oh, in two more years. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know that you've been involved in the community. You've never kind of left Highland Park, have you? No, no. I went to Dillard University. Really? Uh, for, for in Louisiana? In Louisiana. Came back and finished at Wayne State, and I've been here ever since. What was your major? Uh, political science, public policy. Oh, my goodness. You're right in the realm. I'm, I'm there. So yeah. uh, what do you do besides being a city councilman? Wow. Well, with all the problems that we have in our city right now, Ms. Perry, I'm really focusing in on, on that. I was a teacher for over 12 years at Detroit Public Schools. Really? Yeah. What did so you I, teach? I taught math and science, elementary mm -hmm. level. And I just have to give you credit. Anytime you're an instructor like you were in Harlem Park, and I never had your class, but the fact that you were so popular, I felt like I knew you, even, every, though, even though you never instructed me personally. I know, I know, I know, I know. But um, I was just lucky. There was good people in Highland Park. I love Highland Park. I always tell people that. Tell me this. When you got on as a partial, I mean, on that partial term, mm -hmm. What were you encountering? What was going on in the city of Highland Park at that time? Well, interestingly enough, at the time when I ran for the partial term, I was the chairman of the planning commission 
And so I knew a lot of things that were coming down the pike. And so the natural progression would be for me to run for city council. And I did that with the support of the citizens. And at, after that, we had to encounter a lot of um, economic difficulties, of course. We have a situation where we just need to make sure we handle the problems and, and those economic well, problems. Well, it was under an emergency manager at the time. It was. We've been under emergency management since 2002. My goodness. Yeah. Some, type, some form of emergency management at Holland Park has been under since 2002, whether a manager or the management. We, month, we have to send monthly reports to the state since 2002. Really? Yeah. So once again, what were the things that were going on in 2010 when you started? We had issues dealing with our pension, and so we most certainly had to tackle that. We have issues dealing with development. We needed to tackle Development those. as in um, homes and stuff in Highland Park? Commercial or development, com homes commercial. development, um, renovation of homes. Now, um, what commercial uh, developments have come to Highland Park? Recently, well, the, the, the last largest development, I will have to say, will be the Aldi development under Mike Curis up there on... Um, is that Sears and, and Woodward? Oh, that's nice. It's yeah, it, I'm seeing nice. it has the credit union up yes, there. It has yeah. rallies. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm a not member rallies. Well, no, but they, they have what's checkers. The name? Checkers. checkers. I knew checkers. it was something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it used to be rallies. <laughs> I know yeah. they have all the restaurants. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a nice development. It is. It is. And um, since 2007, like I said, when I was the chairman of the planning commission, I'm with the um, I'm on the board of the Woodward Avenue Action Association, and that's the group that we're working on the Henry Ford site. Yes, yes. You know, it was funny when I was teaching at Highland Park, there's a poem that was in one of the books that dealt with the Model T. Right. And it was so, I was so proud to tell my students how they pass right by the Model T plant. Right. I said, we're reading something that's international about something that's right around the corner from Absolutely. you. That's, that's exactly right. We have something in Holland Park that's had global impact. Global. And then the bottom line is that every day when I would go to Holland Park High School for those couple of years, I would walk past, my friends and I would see that Ford building on Woodward Avenue. Just to, I've never seen it open. Never, 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 never seen it open. And it's kind of like melted into the landscape of Holland Park. But, uh, but fortunately, the group that I'm with, the WA3, we are working diligently. We have some grant monies coming up. We're looking at some, some very vigorous um, uh, fundraising to get that plant reopened um, to, so it could be more of a You mean the building on what we're near the, 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 the viaduct? The building on what we're near the viaduct. That's the first step. The wow. second step, of course, would be the entire plant that's on the uh, Manchester side. Right. Now, when we talk about this building, let's t talk about that. Didn't you just have something around there or something like we, that? We did. We had the 100-year celebration of the assembly line. A really? lot of folks don't know that. That Anybody that's listening right now needs to understand that the assembly line this first place is right here in Highland Park, right here. Amazing. A global impact. Amazing. It's funny. The assembly line con concept is such an important concept, mm -hmm. period. Right. Because you always have to start with something, and you go there, that's you right. go there, you go there, that's and right. so forth. That's right. And that's such a wonderful concept. Uh, even as a child, in grade school, we, you know, we visited the Ford plant. Mm -hmm. And the teacher made us get a shoe box and other things, and we mm -hmm. had to build our own little mm -hmm. assembly line. Assembly lines are like process. Exactly. And so what happened up here? What did you do? Well, well we had the, um, a band out. We had the, um, the WA3. We're, we're, they were here, and, and we just celebrated the fact that globally the impactfulness of Highland Park is felt around the world. BMW in Germany, they use the assembly line. Honda over in Japan, they use the assembly line. Absolutely. That started right here in Highland Park. Absolutely. And didn't some people bring some cars up around? We, we had some Model Ts oh, what? That, that were there that you could it's take a amazing. ride in. It's amazing. They're still around. They're still around. They're still around. Vintage, classic, and folks that love cars, they take care of those vehicles. Gee. Yeah. And they drive them? They drive them. They amazing. were transported there. They, they drove them down. So what would you like to see fully with that building? Do you ever want to see that building inside fixed up like some of these old structures that they're fixing up in downtown Detroit and making them live again? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at Lansing, they have projects with, that took an old, older building, a classic building, a historical building, and built that back up. And the same thing we have here in Holland Park. Woodward Avenue is our living room, and we yes. need to fix up our living room. Well, and it's it my favorite street. Yeah. I mean, Woodward Avenue, in fact, um, well, I want to write Woodward stories okay. because Woodward Avenue changes from the riverfront 
all the way through the end. You know how it changes. That's it right. changes. 27 miles. Yes. It's, it's a wonderful street. Yes. So uh, that was good that you had that there. And what do you see for the Manchester site? It's so interestingly enough, the, the Manchester site, that's the considered the Crystal Palace. That's a larger undertaking. Yeah, but yes. we most certainly, if you, ever, if you ever had the opportunity to go inside of it, especially recently, it looks as if time stood still. Really? It still looks just as good. The glass is still on the roof. Everything is still there. You can see the, 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 um, the pictures of actually when the folks actually built the cars, and, and you can see the railroad tracks that were there at the train. Isn't came that in. something? It's, 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 it's amazing, and it needs to be uh, preserved, and we're working on that as well. That is truly amazing because there's so many. If any of you in the audience have ever looked at some of those old pictures and see they're up on some of the Highland Park Facebook sites. There are several Highland Park Facebook sites. If you check them out, you will see pictures of men standing around trying to get jobs. That's right. And Henry Ford was given that five dollar a day job thing. And right. that was a lot of money back a in the day. Money. A lot of money. I, I think a lot of times folks uh, don't realize he did that not only because he wanted to of course sell cars. He was a businessman, but he also wanted to make sure his workers who produced those vehicles could afford the vehicles that they produced. Right. And that was the beginning of the middle class. Exactly. That was the middle class exactly. coming up. Exactly. And they, they integrated, they had black workers there and everything. And that, that place is mammoth. Yes, it is. It's huge. My and father's been here since 1952. Really? He moved here. He fought to get into Holland Park, the first African-American on his block. And the fact that he, he was able to do that the integration that Henry Ford helped produce with the $5 a day wage helped him and others like him come to Holland Park and survive. Wow, amazing, amazing. Wow, so he worked there. Uh, he, no. he didn't work there per se, but the fact that the attraction, um, I mean, one thing about a larger plant is you have other leech businesses. That yes, come up as well. yes. Yeah. What, what do you call those businesses? Uh, I forgot what you call them. S suppliers and Supply, stuff. Exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. they they come to work there. And Highland Park just was a major, beautiful city. It was. It was. It was. And and it still can be. We're, we're working towards that. That's great. Yeah. So you ran again, and you mm -hmm. got a nut, a term, a, a full, full term. term. Yes. What has been happening since you started that full term? Well, we, we've been um, at this point just trying to make sure we we stay above water, but it's been a struggle. Speaking of water, let's talk about the go. water bill. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kind of curious because that's what I hear from some of the shopkeepers. Mm -hmm. They said, some people said they hadn't gotten a water bill in right. a long time. What's happening with water? And excuse me for laughing. It's not a laughing matter. I'm just, um, you, you have to almost laugh to keep from crying. Yeah, I know, I know. What's the deal with the... Well, uh, unfortunately, um, we've had some issues with our water plant for a long time. We have a, a we have our own water plant, which is, um, needs some repair. It, it has some troubles, but you know what? If you have a hoopty and you know it needs to be fixed up, it may not run pristine, but it's still your hoopty, and yeah. so you still want to keep it. So, unfortunately, back in November of 2012, we were switched over by the mayor, and the council did not approve this to Detroit's water system. So, our water that we're drinking right now, that we're utilizing right now. It's Detroit's water. It's not our own, and we have our own system. The so, the water plant here couldn't be repaired. The water plant could have been repaired, but we most certainly need to be more aggressive in attracting dollars to get it repaired. But it was working up until November, and we needed to have it repaired. But unfortunately, without council approval, we've been switching. Well, over how to does Detroit. that happen? I mean, uh, no, I'm just curious because it seems like mayor, city council. I, I agree with you. We, we've switched over to Detroit before under emergency situations. Uh -huh. There was a couple of years ago in January 1st where we had an emergency situation. We switched over for a little while as we repaired our plan, and then we switched back over. In this particular case, we were switched over, but we have not switched back. Well, that's been since November? Since November of 2012. Almost a year? Almost a year. So what's are the residents getting water bills now? Because I know, I, I have friends in Highland Park and I've spoken to some people who were afraid of their bill. I agree, yeah. Well, the residents are not receiving bills as of yet. There may be one or two, that one or two blocks that may have gotten a partial bill or something of, something of that nature, but the residents as a whole, they are not receiving bills. Well, if I get a bill and my bill says $1,800, or $2,800, mm -hmm. I hear some of them could run into the thousands. Yes, yeah. 
and I don't have that money. Exactly. What can I do? I mean, that's like a mortgage. I mean, making I arrangements. I agree. Well, the mayor says that you can come down to City Hall and they will negotiate the bill. But, but my concern is that billing-wise, the bills needs to be accurate. They need to go out on time. And the fact that we're in a situation where um, everyone can't handle those type of bills at all. They can't even handle Most the people can't right. handle they them. They can't even handle the percentage of those bills. That we need to fix the situation and fix the system. Bills have been promised for over a year now, and it hasn't happened. Oh, my goodness. Well, who, what... Do, What's going to happen? I mean, I mean, seriously, <coughs> if somebody from Highland Park is watching right now, I, I want to know what's going to happen. I'm sure they do, too. The mayor at this point is looking at bringing in a billing company to send out those bills. Um, we are considering that as a council. Um, the vote is going to come up fairly soon, and hopefully we can rectify the situation. Well, who's reading these meters? Um, those are Highland Park employees reading the meters. This is really, that's really a scary situation. When you said above water and everything, I right. had to ask right. you about the water. Sorry. Well, that's you okay, Ms. Perry. You, you don't make a major move like, like that in November of 2012 to switch us over without a plan. Right. Six months, eight months down the road. There's no plan. Oh, my goodness. I feel, I, I feel bad for the citizens because, uh, well, anyway. That's uh, quite informative. Now mm -hmm. I know. So if somebody says something to me, at least I know right. because people have mentioned this Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. They, they should. I mean, everyone should be concerned. My family members are concerned. My father, my aunts, my cousins, everybody's concerned about this. And, and, and this is a situation where, again, if you, if you make a move like this, you have to have a plan. Wait a minute. Isn't there an emergency manager? What is the – tell me what's happening. There's an emergency manager, mayor, in a city council. Do they work together, or is everybody on an island? As of today, we do not have an emergency manager. Oh. We have been under emergency management oh, ma since I, okay. 2012. Now, we have had three emergency managers in Highland Park since 2002. And they have been? And they have, um, Ms. Ramona Pearson was the first one. Okay. Uh, Art Blackwell was number two, and okay. then Roger Mason was number three. So now, since you don't have an emergency manager, sorry about that, it's saying that, everybody. No, but it's, it's, under the, it's under the act, so it's virtually the same thing. So what does that mean? Well, this is a good time that I'm on the show today because technically we go up to Lansing on Monday to find out what our fate is going to be in regards to a, a manager or arbitration or a bankruptcy or a consent agreement. So. The, I the thought so many perfect. things were happening in Highland Park. I saw the street was getting paved. There are some things happening in the Holland Park. There are a lot of things happening in Holland Park. Some not all positive, some negative. Streets are getting paved is, is a good thing. Um, I know some folks consider it progress. Paving streets, in my mind, like Victor right out here, is not necessarily progress. It's maintenance. It needs to be done. It needs we to happen so every year. We were so happy it was right. done because, <laughs> I mean, it was an obstacle course going down right, Victor. Right, right. I agree. But paving streets is not development. That's, that's no, not necessarily it's progress. Not. It's no, maintenance. It's it has to happen. Money's been sitting there for those streets to be paid for a couple of years now. So it's, it's just it's maintenance. It's just urban maintenance. So since you've been under emergency management, You've had to file reports with the state, correct? Every month, every month, yes. And who files this report? Our finance director. Okay. And then what else? Is there any other thing that you have to do under emergency management? Well, we can't make major moves without necessarily involving the state. Um, the state has sent down um, a couple of folks to sit with us during this time. And amazingly enough, I'm not sure what they've done because they haven't helped us to the point where we're out from under the act or we're in better financial shape they've helped us to the point where we're at where we have to go to Lansing on Monday to have more discussions with the loan review board so I'm not quite sure what the state has done to assist us they've been here since 2002 we should be the best state-run city that's what I've been using lately that we're a state-run city since 2002 but we don't have the vitality and, and the development to show for it what has the state done to help us it, it, it's not there my goodness. So what do you expect, Monday? Do you have any? I know you have some expectations. I know you do. Well, it's, interestingly enough, what, with what Detroit is going through, we're watching that very closely, what Hamtramck is going through. We're watching that very closely, and I'm trying to encourage my colleagues on council to 
act accordingly. Let's get ahead of the game. Let's be proactive on this. Let's right, not wait because every time we wait, we expect the state to come in and, and hold our hand. And then we react. And then we react, and, and yeah. it never works because you don't have leverage when you right, do that. Right, right, right. So we'll see what happens Monday. Um, if I had to guess, I'll look at Detroit and, 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 and see what they're going through and say well, we're probably going to follow suit, unfortunately. But we'll see what happens. Well, uh, do you have, do you all get a chance to speak? We do. We do get a chance to speak and to state our case. But, you know, I just got a sense, Ms. Perry, that this whole thing has already been predetermined. You know, it seems like a lot of things have been predetermined, right. seriously, right. because um, Hamtramck. Hamtramck. Is in the same. Uh, they were allowed to at least kind of suggest who their emergency manager was going to be. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Really? But yeah, they're, they're under, they have an emergency manager right now as we speak. Oh, they do? Yes, they do. Oh my yes, they do. So what powers does the city council have here in Highland Park? Well, we most certainly can advise the mayor on, on, on financial issues and, and development issues. Um, we have, of course, the power of the pen as far as um, ordinances, the power of the purse as far as agreeing to budgets or saying yay or nay to some of the suggestions that the mayor may have. Um, our main thing, of course, is we want to make sure that our ordinances are up to date, our laws are, are appropriate, and we protect the citizens and protect the businesses as well as they operate. Well, speaking of protection, you've got a brand new fire station. We have a brand new fire station um, through, through a Freeman grant, and we most certainly appreciate the federal government in that effort. And um, when, when folks ever doubt that President Obama is, is doing something for urban areas, well, we could just point to our fire station. I almost, almost want to name it the Obama Fire Station. Right. Well, we have Brother Knight on the line. Good morning, Brother Knight. Good morning. Yeah, hey, I'm kind of a little bit under the weather, but uh, <laughs> I wonder if the, uh, the sheriff's department, uh, you know, my cousin Benny's running for mayor. But once he becomes mayor, I think Doc Richardson or my godson Ray Washington, who's chief operations with the sheriff's department, y'all think y'all will have a sheriff's department back there in uh, Highland Park? Well, we've had the sheriff's department here before. Uh, first of all, good right. morning to you, and I hope you feel better. We've had the sheriff's department here before under um, Ms. Pearson. And um, one thing about policing, especially in a small community of 2.9 square miles, is advantageous to the community and to the police themselves to have local police control, to have um, um, community policing, so to speak. Um, I, I have to give the sheriff's department credit. They did a, a fabulous job while they were here. But nothing yeah, they sure did. No, nothing beats your own, though. And so our response time actually is pretty good in the city of Highland Park. We're, we're, we're working on that. We have a, a great chief in Chief Coney. And so I would rather keep our own and maybe have the sheriff's department assist where they can. But most mm -hmm. certainly, when you have your own, you want to keep your own. Oh, one thing, though, that I know Brenda was asking about, if y'all get a financial manager and that Snyder's going to do the same thing he's doing to Detroit, Y'all would not have no power or nothing. And what's going to happen, uh, uh, probably you're going to have some major land developers like Dan Gilbert come over there in Holland Park and rebuild everything and run everybody out. Because with their water uh, situation, if they can't pay their water bill, they'll take their property. I, 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 and it's hooked up to the taxes. So we better pray that Holland Park, Snyder, and John England don't try to take over Holland Park. Because what they're going to do is nothing but a land grab. I agree with you, brother. I have relatives that stay right over there on uh, Pilgrim and Hamilton, and there's only about three houses over there with people living there. I, I agree with you, brother. Going towards uh, going towards 12th Street, back up in that area, there are a lot of my godson lives over there, so it's a lot of burned-out houses over there. I, I agree. But uh, we got to pray that the, the Snyder and Engler don't try to take over and put a financial Did you say manager Engler? in there. You keep on saying Engler. I don't want to hear that man's name. <laughs> Well, you know, he's married to uh, Snyder's sister. Well, uh -oh. <laughs> well, That's one day, see, one day I could tell you a story. Well, no, I'll tell you right now about Engler. <laughs> he was opening, he was at the opening of the um, state police station on 10 Mile. This mm -hmm. was uh, the groundbreaking. And he hates unions. He hated teachers and everything. And I was invited to that groundbreaking. And right after he came out of stage, he started shaking people's hands. But at that point, he was running a commercial with a heavy set black woman walking out of a house and saying, I was on welfare. And Mr. Engler, uh, Governor Engler, he got me off welfare. I fronted him on that. I said, Governor Engler, why did you have a black woman walking out of a house talking about welfare when you know more white people are here in the state on welfare than black? I said, you're playing to a stereotype. 
he right. got he said well she's a nice lady i said i don't care i don't care i said my name's brenda perryman and i am a teacher he got in the car he he stopped shaking hands he got in the car he called a meeting for eight o'clock that next morning and they pulled that commercial wow. Well, that was a good thing. I'm not scared. I'm not you know, scared. Anybody. You know, that's just like uh, uh, Snyder and Dave Bing. He had Dave Bing when they had the uh, when he first got in office up there announcing announcing everybody. You know, he Dave Bing is a boule. So, you know, you know, most of them will find somebody. They'll pay somebody to follow them around, give them some money to do what they say. And then once they get in office, they'll drop them like a hot potato. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Well, thank you, Brother Knight, for calling You're in. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Well, people are aware. Yeah. And people yeah. are and people worry about things like that. They, they, they should. Do. I, I worry about it as well. I mean. So what if it happens um, that an emergency manager should take over? What will the city council be able to do? Well, it's it's really up to the managers. The manager has a few options. They most certainly can uh, can not necessarily abolish, but must have have the city council and the mayor stand down, and they'll take over the um, the management of the city on a day to day basis. But um, you all have been doing so so many great things. We we have been, and and, and maybe the state doesn't know that. So on Monday, I, I plan on when I have my opportunity to make sure the state understands that we've been doing a lot of things in the city of Holland Park, right. and the fact that they've been here the whole time. They're somewhat culpable in, in, right, in, in, right. Any, in any economic downturn that we have. They've been here, so again, since 2002. 13 years. 13 years. 13 I mean, years. no, that's 11 years. Well, I was I was a math drama class. teacher. I was a drama teacher in English. <laughs> we would, we'll disavow ourselves on the on county. Eleven years, right? But that's still eleven years too long. And we should be the, the poster child of of what the state can do as far as emergency management when it comes to small municipalities, and we're not. They haven't done it. So, are there any new projects on the on the burner? Well, well I'll say this: the WA three and I. Again, I'm on the board of what the What is WA3? Woodward Avenue oh, Action that's right. Association. Right. And they, um, th that's a great group, great group based in Royal Oak. But all the cities on Woodward Avenue, we're a part of that. And so we are working diligently on this Ford project. We really believe in this. I've been with them since 2007, long time. It's frustrating sometimes because we have to take baby steps. And in politics, baby steps, um, you're not able to show what you're doing. So just know that behind the scenes, there's some things going on. Oh, I love hearing that. Yeah. What about residents moving into Highland Park? Because I saw some kind of new houses mm -hmm. or houses that have been, it seems like they've been faced, I mean, new facings on them or mm -hmm. something. It's on, um, I forgot one of the streets down there. Well, you have Midland has some new homes. Right. And then there's some homes that have been renovated. That's um, it, renovated. On, on other streets just north of Midland. Yeah. Uh, one thing about new housing, Ms. Perryman, I, I truly believe that the market tells you what to do. And so I appreciate the fact that we've built new homes. But well, most certainly, we want to change internally in the city. Once we change the story of Holland Park, and once folks have good things to say about Holland Park, then that that the word will get out, and then folks will want to come to Holland Park. So we have to most certainly take care of who we have first. Absolutely. Change that story, change that Absolutely. mindset, and then folks will want to flock to Holland Park in a different way. Well, Highland Park is a different kind of city. I I fell in love with it. I, I did my student teaching here mm -hmm. when I was still in college, and I just wanted to be a part of the school district mm -hmm. so much. And mm -hmm. when I got the call for um, to inter be interviewed, I was just so happy because I was offered a contract with Detroit the okay. same day. Okay. And I said, no, it is no question. I want to be in Highland Park. Okay. It was something about the people here. Right. The people here, it was so much like family. I agree. I agree. And I believe that, it, like you said, take care of the residents, their quality of life. Right. And you say police response time is pretty good. Our police response good. time is pretty good, yeah. It's, right. it's pretty good. There are no complaints, from, at least from my end or from the residents that I've talked to about police response time. Right, right. Well, that is, that is totally mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, we have Tony on the line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Just fine, thanks. Yeah, my question is regarding the uh, Highland Park Police Department. They are on uh, motorcycles riding uh, tickets in the um, the Manchester Shopping Center there on Woodward in Manchester. 
They they go on parked cars and, and check the tags on cars. What is that about? I haven't heard anything about that, but most certainly if you could um could, if you could explain that a little bit further, how, how does that work now? They 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 ride okay, up they, the cars. They ride through the lot and look at each tag on each car, and if if it's if it's not a legitimate tag, they write a ticket and tow the car. Okay, so are they searching for expired tags on, right. on vehicles? Right. <laughs> okay, okay. Amazing. I see them do it every day. All my friends are afraid to park up there. <laughs> are, Whoa, are, okay. are those your friends with the expired tags? That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay. They can't afford insurance, so they can't. They, they, they have to sneak and drive. Oh, boy. Well, there's so many people driving dirty, you know, it, I, unfortunately. But hopefully, oh, my goodness. And that speaks to a larger issue, Ms. Kramer. I would love to, I really want to sit down with our, our Detroit delegation that's in Lansing and really come up with a serious plan about how to tackle our insurance race in the city. They're ridiculous. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, 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 and not only insurance race, but the driver responsibility piece. Right. All those things need to be addressed in a collective manner. I mean, we, we, have, the, um, we have the Secretary of State who is, is against driver responsibility, you know, matter of fact. And so the fact that she was a legislature and now she's a Secretary of State, she understands the, the negative impact driver responsibility has. So I think it's time for our, our Detroit delegation in Lansing to come together completely and figure out a way to abolish or amend, majorly amend, this driver responsibility piece. Right. And then that leads to the insurance piece. Well, Tony brought up an issue I'd never heard before. Yeah. I never knew people yeah. come in parking lot. I thought you were safe in a parking <laughs> lot, you know. <laughs> well, Rodney, I got to thank you because we could sit up here and talk about how yes, to park till times get better. Would you come back? Absolutely. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. Oh, wow. And we enjoyed you. You're, I just wish Highland Park so much good luck. Thank you. I need to know what's going to happen up Thank there. You. I need to know what's going to happen in Lansing. I will keep you informed. Are you the spokesperson for the council? I am not the spokesperson. We have a council president who will be the Who's spokesperson. Who's the council president? Chris, Christopher Woodard is our council oh, president. Oh, okay, Chris. Yeah. And we okay. have a pro tem, which is Norma Lewis. So, so I'll be a part of that. I'll be one of the one of, one of one of five, but I most certainly will make my voice heard in a tactful way. But I want to make sure they understand. Oh, absolutely. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you, Miss Perryman. Thank you, too. Free Richard. Free Richard. Free Richard. Free Richard. Oh, I know. I love Richard. You know I do. So I don't even know what's going on. I just came here today. So I, there's always a seat for Richard here at the table. Thank you. And thank you, Rodney. Thank you, Miss Perryman. And stay tuned. We're going to talk about transportation next morning again. Good morning again. This is Brenda Perryman and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33 WHPR Comcast 20 in Detroit and on the World Wide Web www.tv33whpr.com. Now for months all of you have seen my commercials, my sponsor Good Samaritan Transportation commercials and maybe some of you have taken the bus but a bus is a great way to, to ride. And I decided to have somebody from the company come on and talk to us about the places we can go. Good morning, Jada. Jada Bird. Good morning. How are you? You're the office manager. Yes, I am. For Good Samaritan. Talk into the mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, tell me this. Well, are you from Detroit? Actually, I was born in Pontiac, but I've lived in Detroit for quite some time. And uh, how long have you been working with transportation? Oh, 17 years. Oh, that's a long time. Long time. Long time, long time, yes. Right, and so now you're working for Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. I, I um, actually, um, I've been knowing him for a, you know, a few minutes, but I started it about a month ago. Oh, as okay. As an office manager for him. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, um, you do more than just you you know about buses you know about transportation don't y you yes yes i actually um teach safety and compliance as well so which and is now that's very important because there have been um buses have to be well they're governed every 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 business has rules and regulations um for safety and compliance it starts in-house so you have to know how to um, have everything set up properly according to the states and the federal motor carrier rules and regulations to keep your buses on the road properly. 
So that's what I do. That they're in good condition. Absolutely. The and maintenance. Um, and just the in-house. They, they come in. All buses get a grade. All bus companies, they have to be inspected. And they get a grade. And with that, that grade is what determines, they helps their insurance. It, what, it, it determines um, how their buses are running. If the maintenance are good and they get great with that, you, of course you see the buses on the road more. Okay, so tell me this about bus transportation because I remember the longest, well, I've take, taken two long bus rides in my life and both of them were <laughs> Greyhound. Well, one, it was a senior trip that the students, we took the students down to Florida. Oh, that's a long, that's to a long Miami ride. Yes. to get on a ship to go on a cruise. On a cruise. And somebody had told me, said, Miss Perryman, we're going to start off real happy. By the time we get there, everybody will be growling at each other. But it was a kind of long trip. Well, it is a long trip, and it depends on what time of the, the evening that you leave. I always recommend if you're going to go on a long trip like that, you kind of want to stop in, in somewhere in between and give them a break. Otherwise, um, you when you say give a break, give a break. A lot of people, in, based on the mileage, they may stop in another state and stay a night. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, it you breaks can, up the trip. Especially with, with kids, you, right. you got to think about that. Or with seniors, um, on the average, Florida they generally leave at night. Get good night driving in because everyone is asleep, and when you wake up, you are literally in Georgia. You know, wow. if when they if, depend on the stops, how many stops they make. You you know, of course, you can't smoke on a bus, so you have people that they do make stops along the way, and they get off and they rest. They go to rest areas. They may even have dinner on the road. However, um, night driving is better for a, a trip like that. Okay, night driving. I I don't sleep on transportation, but that's just me. I always feel like I, the driver needs an extra set of eyes and my eyes could be the eyes but you have very safe drivers don't you yes yes yes, yes. yeah now tell the audience what drivers have to go through well drivers they actually have to go through training number one um, most most charter bus drivers have had some form of experience at whether it's um, school buses whether they come from the the uh, regular transit system or truck driving but they all have to go to some form of school you just can't wake up today and say I'm a driver that doesn't happen um, charter drivers they have a little more extensive because you're dealing with people yes you're not dealing with the regular oh I dropped some kids off and pick them up and I'll go back no you're dealing with the public and you're dealing with the customers who pay these buses the trips are not not too cheap so when you get on these buses, people are paying. They're, they're, that's your limo, right? And, and the, they have they do cater. And the bus driver has to stay with the people. Mm -hmm. If the people are going for a week, the bus driver is around the them. The bus driver is generally there. He's usually in the same hotel or not far from you, um, and he's there for your back and call. He's there within reason. You know the itinerary. He he brings that bus to you. He takes the groups to their reunions, to shopping, to wherever they need to go, what they have scheduled. That's what that driver does. Now, Philip Bakari, he's the owner of Good yes, he S is. Samaritan Transportation, and he works pretty hard. He does, and not only does he own it, he's a driver as well. And that's a great thing because you have an advantage. Most bus company owners, they, they need to know how to drive their vehicles. That's just you should never have anything on the lot that you can't move. So he likes to drive, and that's a, that's a great thing because he's out there with the public, and he knows exactly what his customers are looking for. Right, right, right. That's excellent. What are some of the great summer trips that you've uh, that people love to go on or they generally schedule for groups? For right now, it seems to be the casinos. The casinos, casinos are, like, the hottest. Fire keepers. They're killing fire keepers. They're going back to Mount Pleasant again. Oh, uh, okay. Four winds. Um, shopping. Oh. A lot of shopping. And some. Where did they go shopping? New, still New York. They're doing New York. They're doing. Um, they're going back to Mall of America. They're. That's Chicago. in Minnesota, yes, right? Chicago. Chicago. They're going back to the mall, downtown, the Michigan Mall. So they, they're, they're still doing it. Okay. What about family reunions? Family, it depends on where you're from. But we have a lot of southern trips, Mississippi, Alabama, 
uh, Georgia, Florida, a lot of family. Now tell me place. why is it better for a family, say if my family reunion is in South Carolina, uh, where I was born. Okay. Say, for example, we're having one and we have a lot of South Carolinians up here and some may be in Chicago and we all want to go down. What is the advantage to taking the bus as opposed to us getting in 10 cars and driving? Safety, number one, safety. Uh, kids are comfortable. The, the, all the, the coaches are equipped with the TV monitors oh. so they get to watch movies. Uh, you're relaxing. You're on a vacation. You're relaxing. It's just you're not spending the amount of money that you would spend flying. R oh, flying is prohibitive. Flights are ridiculous. And even though you're getting there quick, when you look, when you get there to your destination, if you fly, most times you have to rent a car. Oh, that's true. Okay. Um, when renting a car, then you know you're, as opposed to renting a car, you have the bus. You come on the bus, so you have the bus there to still take you to everything, and everybody's together. Right. That's the, that's the point. And We're you could have together. meetings on the bus. Meetings. You could have meetings so okay. everybody, instead of on phones, and, hey, let me call you right back. Yeah, everybody is together. And it's just when you're having a family reunion, just like a family dinner, you want everyone together. Okay, that's a good point. That is a really good point. Now, do churches get go for church conferences? Yes, and they stuff? do. They do a lot of the conventions, whether they're here in Michigan. Um, buses you know they whenever the Baptist Convention comes in we generally get buses that are going out um, for that you have uh, choirs use the bus oh Quite really choirs do yeah especially going across state lines yes um, you have uh, the church has events where they do little uh, when they're raising money they go to Mansfield Ohio to the Living Bible Museum Oh, okay. And there's a new one in Cleveland that they're all starting to go to. There is, it's starting to become a little, you know, popular. So. Oh, okay. Well, I was wondering, too, if, say, for example, if I want to do a fam family reunion next July. Okay. And I'm trying to get my group together here. And like I said, I might have other relatives in Chicago. Will the bus company you know, we, we'll get on here and then they'll go to Chicago and pick up the rest of my group? Absolutely. What we ask is that the group in Chicago um, is in an area where we can come off the freeway, pick them up, and get back on the freeway. Okay, not okay. go all into the right, city. And right, stuff. we're not trying to go all into the city. We need to come because you're still on a time man. You know, you right. want to you wanna get this done and, and get where you need to be because you're on, on the schedule. Time. Right, on time, on time. on the schedule. Oh, okay. Now, if I'm still planning this reunion and I'm planning it for uh, July, okay, what would my, my steps be once I call you? Well, your steps be you call me. On the average, our office will send you a price quote letter because when you're planning a family reunion, most you have to have those meetings and you have proof that this is what the cost is. Now, you divide your cost. You divide it up by the seats or how many people you have in your family. You come with a budget. Okay, this now is what it Now, your buses are, you have 47 seats, 55 seats. And 32 passengers. And 32 passengers. Yes, yes. So you divide it up based on your family members or if you're charging for children, however you want to do it. That then you say, okay, well, this is what the cost is for the bus. In order to secure your date, we, would, we require a 10% deposit. That's all? That's it, 10% deposit. Final payment with the full itinerary is due 14 business days prior to leaving. Okay. Now, I know when we're collecting money, it's for some people it's much easier during that course of that time to just bring in and pay. Oh, paying be a, paying on it paying like on a radio, it. like a layaway exactly, plan. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's a good idea. Exactly. You can pay on it now within that especially on overnight stays you are responsible for the driver's room okay other unless otherwise stated okay now if you're staying at the ritz of course a driver you don't have to have him unless you need him all day every day if i'm staying at the ritz i might have flown down no i'm just i know <laughs> i know but you believe it or not people will ride the bus oh i know and they stay in beautiful Oh, I know. Beautiful. I know. Yeah. If you saw the commercial, we have some beautiful hotels on the commercial, oh, too. Oh, my first time seeing it. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. 
Yeah, so it's on the Good Samaritan website also. Mm -hmm. So um, would you tell the audience how to get in touch with Good Samaritan? Okay, Good Samaritan has two phone numbers, but the main number now is area code 313-273-0200. He's relocating um, from Oak Park into Detroit. So it's 313-273-0200, but the phone number that's on the commercial will actually roll right over into that number or you can call us directly. We're open Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. Right, right, right. And what, what about wintertime? Does anybody, I know wintertime is not the same as summer or spring because the roads are kind of uh, funny, mm -hmm. but like I know in January of last year, a lot of buses made that pilgrimage to Washington, D.C. Well, yes, yes, for major events, that's gonna happen. The buses are available if you want to go. We are going to take you. But for the most time, in Michigan, we call that our downtime. Because December, after Christmas, January, people are pretty mellow. And unless you have a ski team or a hockey team, your buses pretty much, they lay low up until February. In mid part of February, academic games start in March. So we're getting these kids back and forth. They generally take charter buses up to Grand Rapids. Oh, right. What about, um, according to what I'm looking at, because I am still fairly new there, we have some pretty good schools up under our belt, which is which is really, really good. And to get those schools out, a lot of it is privatized, but it's okay. You know, because the buses you call, we and when we don't, believe it or not, sometimes they don't always use the school bus. They get the charter bus. Yeah, that's funny. That they is get the funny. Charter bus, and I'm, you should see little kids' faces to get on a. When they bus. get on a big charter bus, I know. <laughs> they get excited. I know I would. Yes, be. they get excited because we just did this past weekend a lot of cider mills. Oh. And the kids, some of the smaller kids. I want to go to the cider mill. I know. My my <laughs> daughter went over there and bought some warm donuts and some cold apple cider. Franklin or Blake's? I think she went. To, I have, to Franklin. Where's Franklin. Blake's? Blake's is in Armada. Where's Armada? Yeah, I about, know nothing about, about Michigan. It's about 45, yeah, it's about, yeah, 45 miles. Macomb. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Near about 32 mile road. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, wherever they make it, I just have to get some before November. <laughs> I mean, because I just had that one donut and a little bit of apple cider. I need more. I need more. I so, what are some other trips that Okay, in the winter time, I know uh, there's some groups who go down to Florida. Well, usually your cruisers, they will go. Um, they we take them down into Miami, right? And the, the bus stays for a week. For, you know. So the bus stays in Miami for a week. Yes. The bus driver just yes. hangs it, out. He he's on vacation. <laughs> wow. We call it take your vacation because it's it's much easier for the bus to stay as opposed to coming back oh, to Michigan absolutely. and then going back. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Tell me this, if there's a person out there in the audience, since you know about transportation, who might want to become a charter bus driver, what would they do? Well, first off, they need to check to make sure uh, the name. To the name that they choose, they need to do a name. No, no, name. they want to be a driver, not an owner. Oh, I'm gonna say, oh no, for the owner now, you have to do a lot. Driver, they still need to go to some form of uh, driving school. Is there they a driving to, school around? Yes, they have several uh, truck driving schools. They have um, once you get your commercial driver's license, then you have to test um, generally on a charter bus if you're trying because each bus swings out differently. So they need. What do you mean? They have a. Um, you have. You know how fire trucks pull out. Yes. And how that fire truck makes that big turn. Well, you have certain models of buses that do the same thing. So the driver really needs to know how he's backing in and backing out. It's not as simple as just going up and down the street. They need to know how to turn those wide buses. That's a lot of feet. Yeah, it has those big wheels. Mm -hmm. and then tag. I mean, a yeah. big steering big steering wheel. columns. Absolutely. Yeah. She said steering columns. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they go to school, and then after they pass. They pass. They have to actually get a little bit up under their belt, just like truck driving. You have to have so many miles. So how do you know, 
everybody wants experience. How do they get experience? My, my suggestion is if you're just starting, drive the trucks for a minute. Drive the trucks? trucks, yes. Drive the trucks because you're looking. That's a lot of of, of weight. You're looking on how to how to maneuver this vehicle. Okay, you need training for that. Oh. It's almost that time. Oh my goodness. Well, once again, let's talk about Good Samaritan Transportation. Let's give that number. Three one three two seven three zero two hundred. And leave the driving to them. Exactly. Great. Thank you, Jada Thank Bird. You. you did Good wonderful. Mm, you did wonderful. Thank you. And I'll see you next week. We're going to do a rerun of Table Talk this week. We're off at 1 o'clock today. But see you again next week.